histology of the parathyroid glands. The parathyroid glands lie in a close relationship to the thyroid gland. That is why they are called as the parathyroid gland. Normally, there are two parathyroid glands, that is one at the superior and one at the inferior of the either side of the thyroid gland. That means the parathyroid glands are numbered as four, whereas sometimes there may be as many as eight parathyroid glands. So now let's learn about the structure of these parathyroid glands. Each parathyroid gland consists of a connective tissue capsule from which some septa extend into the gland and within the gland, the network of reticular fibers support the cells. So these give the septas and in the gland, the reticular fibers or the reticular network supports the parathyroid cells. Many fat cells and the adipocytes are present in the tissue stroma and the parenchyma of the gland is made up of the cells. Those are arranged in cords and numerous sinusoids lie in close relationship of these cells. So now let's learn about the cells of the parathyroid gland. The cells of the parathyroid glands are mainly of two types. The first type of cells are called as the chief cells and the second type are called as the oxyphil cells. The chief cells are also called as the principal cells whereas the oxyphil cells are also called as eosinophil cells. Now let's learn about the chief cells. In this diagram, these darkly stained cells are called as chief cells or the principal cells. So all these cells in which we can see the dark stained nuclei are called as the chief cells or the principal cells. The chief cells are much more in number than the oxyphil cells. With the light microscope, the chief cells are seen to be small round cells with the vesicular nuclei. The cytoplasm is clear and they may be either mildly eosinophilic or basophilic. Sometimes the cell accumulates the glycogen and lipids so that it can look clear. But in these chief cells, the three types of chief cells are described. The one is the light chief cell, that means they stay in light. The dark chief cell, as they stay in dark and the clear chief cells. As the glycogen and lipid accumulates, they look clear. In the electron microscope, the active chief cells are seen to have abundant granular endoplasmic reticulum and they have well-developed Golgi complexes. Both active and inactive chief cells contains glycogen and the amount is greater in the inactive cells. In the normal parathyroid gland, the number of the inactive cells is greater than the number of the active cells. And what is the main function of the chief cells? It is they produce the parathyroid hormone or the parathormone. So these chief cells secrete the parathormone or the parathyroid hormone. This parathyroid hormone or the parathormone helps to increase the serum calcium levels as this hormone has a osteoclastic activity on the bone and it enhances calcium absorption from the gut. And now coming to the second type of cell which is called as the oxyphil cell. So these cells are the oxyphil cells. These are also called as eosinophil cells. Remember the parathyroid glands are made up of masses of the cells which have numerous capillaries in between. And now coming back to the oxyphil cells, the oxyphilic cells appear as a large eosinophilic or the pink cells which are few in number. So these are the large eosinophilic cells which are very few in number. The oxyphil cells are much larger than the chief cells and they contain granules as you can see it here. They contain granules and they are larger in size than the chief cells. These granules are stained very strong with acidic dyes and their nuclei are smaller and they stain more intensely than those of the chief cells. So these nuclei are very much stained than the nuclei of the chief cells or the principal cells. And remember the oxyphil cells are absent in the young age and they appear a little before the age of the puberty. And the adipocytes are present. So these all are the adipocytes which are present in the parathyroid gland. And you can also see the presence of the sinusoids and the capillaries are also present in between the cells. And the clinical correlation of the parathyroid gland, it is the hyperparathyroidism. That means the hyperfunction of the parathyroid glands cause the production of the excessive parathyroid hormone. And it is of three types, the primary hyperparathyroidism, the secondary hyperparathyroidism, and the tertiary hyperparathyroidism.
and the another clinical point is the hypoparathyroidism the hypo in the term hypoparathyroidism it means the deficiency or the absence of the parathyroid hormone and the lower secretion of the parathyroid hormone causes the hypoparathyroidism so the clinical points are the hyperparathyroidism and the hypoparathyroidism the hyperparathyroidism is of three types that is the primary the secondary and the tertiary so guys this is all about the histology of the parathyroid gland if you like this video do subscribe to my channel if anyone is seeking quick and effortless admission in these following countries you can contact me on instagram at knowing underscore anatomy link is in the description if you like my video do subscribe to my channel And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.